Hey, what's up and welcome to this little experiment that actually turned out into a fun project. So we're making a cartoon in After Effects. This is something that has fascinated me for such a long time. And honestly, it feels like magic to be able to just make a few doodles, mash them together, and just with some pivot points, rotations, and the puppet tool, you can create some pretty cool looking animations. So we're gonna start the series with this character guy and animating him into a walk cycle. And the best way to do this is to draw out every limb, every part of your character separately, and then cleaning it up and coloring it, and then reattaching everything together so that it can be animated in After Effects. So let's start with that first step. I'm gonna start with this boot and I'm gonna just basically roto and cut out the boot from the rest of the page. And I'm gonna make a duplicate copy so that I can kind of create a rough mask on top and I'm gonna add a linear color key to that new top layer. And I'm just gonna select my uh, paper color. So what this did is basically I isolated just the outline of the boot and I can add a fill effect so you can even colorize the outline or you can make it pitch black. And the nice thing about this is that we have a layer underneath it, which is basically the fill of the boot. So we can even colorize this, we can darken it with a brightness and contrast effect. And uh, yeah, it just gives us a little bit more control and it allows us to kind of keep all that detail of, of the outline of the marker without cutting it by rotoscoping it. So let's pre-compose this boot so we can actually place it, scale it down. We wanna readjust the pivot point to the top of it so that it actually can look right when we're rotating and animating this uh, element. And then to kind of get a good sense of how the character is stepping, I just created this new solid and I'm just gonna place it at the bottom of my comp as like a floor reference. And then all I have to do is basically have the boot follow the leg animation, which I already painstakingly did. I did not wanna put you through all that it just took a while but once you get it to look right everything else can uh, animate pretty easily to, to follow that main motion so to do that it's just simply animating the position and rotation of the boot and also adding a puppet tool so that we can distort kind of the the top of the boot when it's actually you know kind of pressing down on the ground in that first point of contact and it just adds a, a little bit more of a layer of animation which i think looks really cool and that's one way of animating, just animating the transform properties of a layer or using the puppet tool. And then there's the traditional animation of just kind of drawing a, a copy of something over and over with a different motion as I did for the chest, for example, and also the cape. And you just wanna slide those cut out elements into place and you can see that already going frame by frame with just a few of those few frames added in it's already adding a nice little bit of like more rough and real animation to it and the cool thing about this is that you know if we're missing for example a few extra frames for this walk cycle to be complete with the chest we can even just duplicate frames that we already have and we can make you know even other adjustments and we can also just duplicate those frames and even shift them around in our comp to kind of make it seem like it's a different new drawing. So that's another way of animating. And now finally, one other way that I've done for this character in this idle pose, for example, is by adding a mesh warp effect to the part of the body that I want to animate. So in this case, I want his chest to kind of rise up and down as he's breathing. And I'm basically trying to line up the lines to the parts that I actually want to affect. So I'm going to create a keyframe for the distortion mesh. And I'm just going to push this point out just a little bit, maybe the, the bottom of the belly too. And then I'm gonna copy the first frame and paste it at the very end so that we can make a seamless loop. And now we can see that our character is just breathing up and down. And for being so simple, it actually looks pretty great. But let's take it a step further to kind of match the kind of choppiness of the rest of the animation. I'm gonna actually split this layer a few times. And once we have those layers split in that way, we can actually uncheck the keyframes for the distortion mesh. And so basically it's gonna freeze that distortion in that point in time for that layer without it actually animating to the next step. So we're basically keeping the distortion to follow that motion so that it's not actually moving, it's just kinda of skipping forward. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. 
but when you're doing these animations, like you're animating the position of something in After Effects to kind of give it that same choppy style or animating on twos or ones, you can actually change the frame rate of your composition. And then under the advanced settings, you want to make sure that that retains the frame rate in other comps as well. So that you can kind of create animations with eight frames per second, because if you don't, it's just going to look weird that you have kind of more choppy elements and then just smooth ones on top because of course if you're just animating the position of something like the hands for example and the hoodie rotating up and down as it's bobbing you want that to be also choppy and not just kind of smooth because it's gonna look weird it just makes the whole thing feel a little bit more cohesive and you want to be intentional with this type of thing to get a complete walk cycle, sometimes you want the character to stop and idle and to maybe start walking again. And so basically I created a main comp that has a bunch of other comps of animations so that I can kind of plug and play uh, whatever I want. So if I want the character to transition from a walking to idle, I have the walking animation, then the walking to idle, and then the idle animation. Doing it this way, you very easily create these kind of modular building blocks that can make you very quickly adjust the way that your character is walking or stopping or anything else. And by the way, in the next part, we're actually going to add this guy into a scene, which is super fun. And we're going to have him walk across the scene and add all this nice parallax and all these props. Uh, so yeah, definitely would love to see you there for that one. And I hope you enjoyed this one and you found it useful or inspiring. Now, if you are interested in making cartoon, I actually have a pack where I have a bunch of hand-drawn elements like explosions, lines, and just motion graphic elements that are super cool to use. I use them all the time in my videos. It's a super cool way to layer accents in your video. It has so many uses, but yeah, definitely would encourage you to check that out. And if you want more videos like this on animation, but also VFX and filmmaking, definitely consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here and join the community. All right, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Squire, and I'll see you next time.